Well, every, everything, everything, everything you've gotten in America, everything you've got, this is what the black bourgeoisie don't want you to know. Everything we got in America, we fought for. You can't name one thing that we got that was relevant that we didn't spill blood. You got out of slavery, you spilled blood. You got the Civil Rights Bill, you spilled blood. You got the Voting Rights Act, you spilled blood. Jim Crow, you spilled blood. You have wow. never voted for a single thing you got that's relevant. Mm. Give me one thing we got through voting. I'm listening. No. Yeah, real Give me talk. one thing black folks ever got through voting. Not fair. No. If you want to change it, you got to spill blood. Yeah. 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 Well, the ones that's rocked to sleep and say, well, we had a black president. Who did what? what? <laughs> Who took everything you fought and gave it a homosexual. Barack Obama took everything black people died for for the past hundred years and gave it to the homosexuals. He didn't do one thing for black people. Mm. Name one thing he did just for black folks. I can name three things he did just for homosexuals. I can name two things he did just for gays. I can name three things he did for immigrants. Name me one thing that house boom did for us. Mm. Nothing. And you got black people running around calling him great. For what? What did he do great? Because he sat in the seat. Well, I'm going to say one thing. What? what was the one thing you think he did great? For me, it's the image of black man. Come on. Okay. <laughs> kind of speak to that, dude. That's not doing nothing. <laughs> That's not an act. That's not. Okay. Let's objectively quantify that. All okay. Right. The image of a black man as if we never saw one, right? <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> Family, I'm talking about. Okay, you saw a black family. Here's my question to you. How did that translate to higher graduation rates? How did that translate to lower prison rates? How did that translate to a higher black entrepreneurial rate? How did that translate to a reduced police genocide rate? Can you name one statistic that went up as a result of Obama being I can't. I can't. You got me on that. That's real talk. Empty <laughs> symbolism. <laughs> Empty. Obama should go right next to Jesus, white Christ in the church. Because just like him, he ain't nothing but an empty symbol that does nothing. So hold for on. Him. If we get another black candidate, to I run. don't want another black president. Because you Negroes going to go to sleep for eight more years. Mm. I don't want to see another black person in that seat so y'all can go to sleep. Thank God Hillary didn't win. That would have went to sleep even deeper than so Obama. So are you saying that you're glad Trump won so we'll get a, a way? I'm telling you, I don't care who the president is as long as they're not black. Because <laughs> people are too politically immature that they will think that they're getting something just because the person sitting there is black. We don't have the political IQ to deal realistically in an America with a black president. Your illusions of inclusion starts deceiving your perception i don't want no black president i don't even need a black mayor i don't need a black governor i don't need a black u.s rep i don't need a black senator i want black power and, and you want black power and don't none of that equal black power don't none of that equal black power i want what? black power what? not no damn black puppet what is the path what is the path to black power economic and political solidarity Strength is in numbers. The white men only respect three things. Blood, money, or numbers. Mm. Organized numbers, blood, or money. Real talk. And guess what? You're going to have to do all three. You're going to have to die. You're going to have to pay. And you're going to have to organize. Because every year we sit on our ass and do nothing, we fall further behind. Which means that's how much harder our great-grandkids, great-grandkids, going to have to fight for our liberation. We are the most pathetic generation of blacks ever in American history. You can't show me another group of black folks like the one we got now from 1970 to 2020. Mm. This is an embarrassment. I want to ask you something real quick. because What said, have we done to contribute to the black struggle in the, since Dr. King died? Give me one thing we've done. You can't give me nothing. You ain't got no Harriet's. You ain't got no Fannie Lou Hamer's. You ain't got no Ida B. Wells. You ain't got no Fred Hampton's, no Rap Brown. You ain't got no Snick. You ain't got no Core. You ain't got no Freedom Riders. You ain't got no Garvey. All you got is basketball, football, white women loving, 
blonde hair, living in the suburbs, white university, Mercedes Benz driving ass niggas. <laughs> How do you get that to take hold around the country where administrators, people that open up schools, where they want to listen to you and then they actually think about it and then employ that thought? Well, the thing is, I've really never had anyone in a strategic mainstream way to take issue with my message. It's indefensible. My truth is, is nothing but the truth. So you can't debunk it right? because it's the truth. They're just not used to a black man with my credentials telling the black truth as unapologetically as I do. So what do you do with someone whose truth you don't want to admit to? You have to hide them under the radar. You have to keep them off of Oprah. You got to keep them off of. Uh, or, or you Dr. put out a Phil. smear campaign. Or you put out the smear campaign because the truth is, you, 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 nobody, if you notice, none of my detractors ever attack my work. Uh, yeah. They never attack the work. It's always. <laughs> it's always uh, some off hand. Personality, uh, personal life lies yeah. that they fabricate, but you can't touch the work. Well, clear one thing up for me. I, I'm, I don't mean to jump around. The academy itself. Yes. Like, we came across some real discerning stuff. Like, there was actually a social media page designed to smear you. Yes, sir. Two of them. I, I couldn't believe it. And one thing they were harping on was the academy. They don't yes, believe sir. it's true. They're saying it was it's built on toxic land. And, oh, no, that's not true. And they took true. issue with your ownership of the school. Yeah. Well, Can they take speak? issue with anything I do. <laughs> Here's the thing you got to understand. When I came into the, the national black conscious movement, first of all, my foundation is Marcus Garvey um, in Philadelphia, <laughs> right around the corner from the school where I had the black history class. Yeah. I joined the Marcus Garvey's movement, the UNIA. And Philadelphia just so happened to be international headquarters for Marcus Garvey's UNIA. So this is the neighborhood I, was, I grew up in. Right. So again, no coincidences, yeah, right? Yeah, right, right? And my mother used to buy my sneakers right next door to the Garvey Hall for years, but I never knew it was the Garvey Hall. So I joined the UNIA when I came out of undergrad in 97, and I never looked back. So I've been in the UNIA more than 20 years. And it was sitting with those elders. They really nurtured my political understanding. They really helped me improve my mastery of uh, revolutionary pan-African nationalism, a Garveyism, universal African nationalism. And... I worked for them and I was largely local though. I was largely local. The school psychologist like the the area or Philadelphia? Philadelphia. Okay. My first out of town speaking engagements was through the UNIA. Okay. New York, North Carolina, Atlanta. New York, the home of okay. culture. <laughs> right? Yeah. But then in 2010, everything changed. And that was when I was invited to Chicago on an interview just like this, public access. A brother Dawa Yisrael, Hebrew brother, good brother out of Chicago. He called me up. Because I write articles. I do a lot. Of, I love to write. And he said, I'm reading an article someone sent me. And I would love to interview you on my show. Yeah. I can't afford to fly you up here. <laughs> but if you can get to Chicago, I would love to interview you. So I said, wow, Chicago, that's the second largest black metropolis. So I said, yes, I have to get to Chicago. So I flew on up. Yeah. We did the interview. I didn't think nothing of it. Yeah. I asked him for a copy of the DVD, which he gave me. Yeah. And then I was scheduled to speak in Harlem, New York for the first time. Okay. Three weeks later, yeah. I took copies of the Chicago interview, gave them out. Within 48 hours, I was known internationally around the world. Like, literally, my phone did not stop ringing for about 30 days. Oh! And every time it rung, it was a different area code. And not just America. I was getting calls from Africa, Jamaica, Europe, all off that one interview. People oh, said, man. who is this guy? And that's where the jealousy came from, because there were other personalities who were already in a conscious movement, but they had not gotten to where I've gotten in two days, yeah. even though I've been working for 20 years. Right, right, right. You know, and so that's where the animosity came from. How can he really have a doctorate degree from a mainstream white university talking the way he talks? Yeah. You know, how can he be a certified school psychologist talking the way that he talks? You know, so that's when the doubt crept in and the jealousy crept in, you know, because when you look at the black consciousness movement, you know, it has a lot of good things about it. But a lot of the people in it are hustlers. You know, they're yeah. con artists. They're not really about change. They just want to make money and make a name for themselves. Yeah. Uh, I'm the only one in my age group who has purchased an institution. 
no one else has. Oh! And that institution is the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy. Let me ask you something. When you acquired the academy, did any of the old patrons of the building want to be involved with your with, with your school? Well, yes, there's uh, brothers and sisters in Wilmington, Delaware, who were formerly affiliated with the school who have expressed interest in being affiliated and involved with my school. Okay. But obviously there's some very clear differences, right? Yes. That was a charter school, which means it's owned by the state. Nobody owns a charter school. Right. Right. By definition, a charter school is an alternative public school. Okay. okay? My school is an independent African-centered academy, right? Yeah. I'm doing things a little bit differently. So at my school, we're going to teach pol political and military science. We're going to teach economic and financial political science. Political and military science. Oh, absolutely. We're going to have a Marcus Garvey Never gun club. The young men will buy, they will get their first gun. They will learn how to use it, how to clean it. Yes, legally now, we're going to follow the state laws, but there will be auxiliaries connected to the school, not a direct part of the school, but auxiliaries connected to the school. And we will teach the young men how to use firearms responsibly in elementary school. Oh, now, oh, <laughs> hold on. That's when everybody else learned. That's when everybody else learned. That's yeah. when Jews learned. I mean, That's they, when Italians learned. I mean, learned. They arming, they, they're arming the, the, the teachers. Exactly. There are many teachers, so it only makes sense. Are your plan with that? And is it early on with the plan right now? It's like, are people trying to come up against you because of that? Like, no, no, no. Well, it all depends on who you're speaking of. White yeah. folks haven't even. It's all Negro attacks. At this <laughs> oh wow! This has all been Negro. <laughs> this is all Negro. Yeah. This yeah. is all Negro. Yeah. A lot of it is being fueled by jealous personalities in the conscious. You got to understand something. I'm a better speaker than anybody else. I have more education than anybody else. I'm the only one with an institution. I get more requested to speak around the world than anybody else. I speak more outside the country than all to put together in the country. Right. So you got to recognize my stature within black consciousness. I don't have an equal. Yeah. Nor do I have a, uh, what do you want to call it? I don't even have a contemporary. There's no other school psychologist in the black country. We have a lot of people uh, talking about history. Yeah. We got a lot of people talking about spirituality. We well, got a lot of people talking about what? diet. I'm the only person dealing with school psychology. So my, my space, you can't say, well, we don't want to hear from Dr. Umar no more. Let's go and get him. <laughs> yeah. You don't have nobody else to fill this. Right. You understand? So yeah. that's where the jealousy comes from because right. I'm irreplaceable. Yeah. And I don't have a YouTube channel. Right. But I have more videos on YouTube than everybody with a channel put together. Wow. I don't have a channel. So do you know what that means? That means people love me and my work so much yes. that they upload everything I say without me asking them to do it. And they do it at a rate greater than the self-promoters do put together. Oh! really big and i say that humbly but i'm untouchable and what? when it comes to if i never built and see this is the point i gotta say this <laughs> if i never built the school <laughs> if i never built let's say i never built it now right. we have it right 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 let's say i never built it i saved more black boys from special ed than anybody in black history I've saved more black boys from psychiatric meds than anybody in black history. I've empowered and educated more black parents about the school to prison pipeline than anybody you can name in our history. Exactly. There's, listen, I have changed the way black parents deal with the school system. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I changed the way black parents deal with the mental health system. I've changed it. Black parents in Ohio will never deal with schools again the way they've dealt with them after they listen to me tomorrow. You understand? Yeah. So right. even if I never built the school, yeah, you you already laid a seed. My foundation is impeccable. Yeah, the school is just cherry on top, but it's a much necessary cherry. Yeah. And I'm gonna tell you why. The black consciousness movement has be has gotten overtaken with entertainment. It's all YouTube videos and talk. Okay. There's no organize, no organizing, no nation build, no institution building. Right. So by me building this school, purchasing this four building property. Right. OK. Two schools, two gyms and a fourth building. I think a lot of people are starting to regain their confidence in the black consciousness movement. You understand? Yeah. Because so many people was falling away. They said this is nothing but mess. All you do is fight, gossip, entertainment. Nobody's changing nothing. It's all intellectual masturbation. Right. So now yeah. we have a brother with an institution now. Right. And I'm the only one in the conscious community with an institution. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. A physical brick and mortar institution dedicated. And so now I think a lot of people are saying, okay, this brother is the real deal. Let's rock with him now. Yeah. Like, you see? And right. so that's why I want all your listeners out there, your viewers, to donate because now we got to fix the school. Yeah. Yeah. So please, if you want to donate, you can go on your cash app and donate to dollar sign FDMG school. Okay. If you don't have the cash app, the full link is cash.me slash 
dollar sign FDMG school. Okay. We're trying to, we need a million to fully rehab all four buildings. But even if we only get a half of that, I should be able to get one of them two schools done. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. So we're still in a good position because even if we only get some of that, when are, when, the, when are you projected to like when are you looking to no date until we fix no, it up? No, it's no up to y'all. No date until it's we up fix to y'all. I'm not putting no date out there. Yeah. It is up to the people. <laughs> the people decide. You understand? Yeah. It's up to the people. Yeah, so, hey, yo, quit, 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 quit talking mess. Yes. It's make it a reality if you don't think it's real. Make it a reality. You know, if you don't think it's real, quit make it a reality. Quit talking down on the brother and hating on the brother. Oh, yeah. Right. right. But I'm not worried about it because none of the haters yeah. will be allowed to attend any function at the school. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, uh, they being checked at the door. <laughs> you know what I mean? We, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, but they're not getting it anyway. Like, excuse me, brother, all due respect. Yeah. You had some disrespectful things to say about the FDMG campaign. You have a lifetime ban, brother. You can't Yo, come in here the rest of your me. life. Now, let me ask you a question because I really got hit to you through the Hidden Colors series okay. with Tyreek. And we had a chance to rap with Tyreek before. Really great guy. You guys got a great relationship? Before? No, we don't. But no? next okay, question. Okay, we ain't got to worry about that. Okay. Now, your fame with Hidden Colors. Mm -hmm. A lot of people was listening to your message on there. You had that's where where I was like, yeah, this this guy's you know, he know what he's talking about. yeah, he knows what he talking. He talking a little bit more than nostalgia. It makes sense, you know, more than history. Somewhere you you were not there, yeah. But you know, you talking ADAs, you talking black educate the Holocaust, you talking all of this stuff, mm -hmm. you know. So you know, how was it for you? You know, being in that, being a part of that hidden color series, like how was it for your career? Did it help? Um. I wouldn't say it helped because I was already at that time yeah. the hottest thing in consciousness. Okay. That's why he wanted me on it. Okay. okay? I was the hottest thing in the country at that time. Um, I would say for millennials and people who were not familiar with my work in the UNIA and my work within the school to prison pipeline, yeah. it may have been their first introduction to me. My if you're a YouTuber. <laughs> yeah. So if you're a social networker who's not in the streets, yeah. that may have been your first introduction to Dr. Umar. Okay. But if you are a serious organizer and community activist, yeah. you already knew who I was. Yeah. So it all depends on where you were in your own political development yeah. within black consciousness. You right. follow what I'm saying? Yes, if you was already in the streets, you already knew me. Yeah. So there was people like, I already knew that brother. You know, I know him. I've been following him for years. He helped me with my children. Right. But if you're not in the streets yeah. and you just on YouTube, then that might have been your first introduction to me.